Hey YouTube, JP Dillon. Today we're looking at a Sherwood S7100. Complaint is it's got a weak channel. And if we look over at the scope there, you can see that the left channel is weak. It's not frequency dependent. It's weak uh, no matter what, whether it's a low frequency or a high frequency. So. We're going to do some poking and probing and see what the cost of that is. So first, we're going to look down in here on our amplifier board. Let's pop this out of the holder here. And we're going to scope out at the input of the amplifier and see side there's the input on the left there's the input on the right and that looks like there's a bit of a difference there so let's go to both inputs and we can see that at the input to the amplifier the uh, weakness in the channel still persists so the problem is very likely not not in the power amp. All right, let's take a look at our preamp. Yeah, this is our basic preamp here. And then I think this, I don't remember if this phono preamp also doubles as the input, but we'll see. So. Let's, uh, oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, this is for phono here. All right. And, okay. Let's go to our preamp. Here's our right channel input. I'm going to turn the speakers off momentarily so that I don't heat up the amplifier. I'm going to connect our scope to the let's see in right and left. Okay. That's out. Left out, right out, and left in. Interesting. All right, so we're connected to the input of the preamp, and we can see that our disparity still exists. Okie dokie. So, coming to the input of that preamp, it's the same damn thing. Let's go to the volume control. And let's see what's at the top of our volume control here. And we can see at the top of the volume control there's a big difference too. All right. So something's going on here. So we've got poor signal at the volume control and at the input here. So we need to look before. Let me hook the speakers back up. And it's fairly significant. Make sure we're on the right scale here. Yep, still cruddy. And as I go up and down in frequency response, 
the gain changes ever so slightly, but not really enough. Right channel remains linear, left only goes up a little tiny bit. Okay. So now we have to look and see where this comes from. The question is, is does this phono board actually have a relationship as a preamp buffer? I don't think it does. Let's uh Nope, nothing there. Because we have these markings here called auxiliary. Left out, right out, but there's no signal there. There's no signal on aux. So, let's pull up the schematic. Okay, so here's where we're at. If we follow this guy, this auxiliary line, it goes up to our tape monitor switch because uh, we're bypassing that phono board there. It goes up to the tape monitor switch and then it goes to the volume control and I notice that at the volume control it's loading down. Um, if I go to the high side of the volume control it's better but at the center tap it's loading down. So one of these channels uh, has got a fault that's causing the signal to get pulled down. There's less amplification. And it's a very simple preamp. It's just, as you can see, one gain stage that they uh, they pump through a tone control set. So this is super high gain and then they change the tone here. It doesn't seem to be affected by frequency response that much, so it would probably be a feedback issue but uh, let's see my suspect there is the 10 microfarad at the output that could be weak the 4.7 at the input could be bad and loading it down let's find out which all right so far I haven't been able to find anything of interest here measuring the voltages on these transistors, 4.2 on the collector for one channel, 4.4 on the other, 1.16 on the base, 1.16 on the base, 0.55 on the emitter, 0.55 on the emitter. All right. Twenty twenty two thousand dollars a year, month a year. I give you a raise. See? Uh -huh. All right, and scoping the outputs of the capacitors, the output capacitors on the collectors here. You can see that they're nice and even. And I've checked all the resistors here. Let's see. Let's go to uh, the outside. Come on. Left and right. Okay, let me write you down on the list, Brian. Do you want the 12 o'clock or the 1 o'clock? Uh, I gotta crank this. Hold on. It doesn't really matter. Spinny, to me. spinny. spinny. Going to the output okay. point. Is That's Brian, where our disparity starts. So I wonder if the uh, amp is loading it down. Say that again. Alright, so disconnecting the amp. You can now see that the output of the preamp is equal. So the problem is in the amplifier, and in the input circuit's loading down, so we need to figure out what's going on there. Okay, so I think we found our issue here. If we trace out the input, uh, this is the left channel, this is the one that's affected. Trying to... Do, 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 do. Let's turn the signal up a little bit so we can see it. All right. Here's the input on one. Let's take over at the scope here. Alright, see that? There's the input on the other. A little bit bigger. Trace this down to here. This is your input capacitor. And so signal comes in here, goes to this resistor, then it goes to this capacitor. 
right so here. Sure. Focus. I have one tomorrow with one. It is on the high side. Huh? It's on the high side. It's on the low side. Let's go to the working channel. High side, much bigger. Low side, okay. much smaller. And what is uh, your name? So, in actuality, say that again. The one channel that I thought was bad is it's actually the good the one. Thing. The bad channel, since the feedback loop goes That's to the low side of this input capacitor, which is defective, the loss of feedback because this capacitor is pulling down the input. Okay. causes you know the gain are. to go up and that's why the right channel is higher than the left yeah, so this capacitor is defective and that's why one channel is louder than the other so it's not that it's not that the right channel is less it's that the left channel has too much gain so we need to replace that yeah. defective capacitor New cap in fixes it. Little bugger right there. All right, so if we pull up. These must. These are for the Nakamichi 681 ZX. Look at these lamps. Oh, the tiny grain of wheat lamps? Yeah, I'm going to stick them in the not an easy box. These came from Neil Edgar. Let's see. Of course, you have to worry about the fact that the oxidation of the leaves going into the lamp may have caused it to become full of air. But... So what was happening is the, uh, the input capacitor here, which is being fed by the feedback line uh -huh. from the outputs, this was shorted. And so it was pulling down both the preamp, but it was also loading down the feedback loop. So it was getting excessive gain because it wasn't getting the feedback that it wanted. That's what's wrong. So I'm going to replace all those capa the remaining capacitors in the amp anyways. He's paying for it. All right. New caps. Equal channels. What kind of liquid are So, this thing's happy. There's our uh, FM. Multiplex, it looks good. Don't need to align that. Let's see. Just check our phone real quick. Turn down the signal a little. And make sure the uh, turntable is working. Yep, EQs looks good. And back to auxiliary. We'll see how much power it puts out. Mm -hmm. Ghetto blasters. All right, that's our maximum before clip. Well, yeah, there's our clip point. Uh, Let's see. Uh, speaking, you know, the okay. Let's get a meter. Ground is the chassis on this, so that'll make it easy connection wise. Our right channel, we have 12. And 12. <coughs> so 144 divided by a 8. Because I don't know that off the top of my head. So 12 times 12. Come on. Divided by 8. 18 watts per channel, roughly. 
and that's taking the RMS AC measurement at the output into 8 ohms. So this thing's good. Nothing really else that we need to do to it. Uh, the reason why this one was difficult to troubleshoot was because it uses a single stage preamplifier. There's no buffering. So any kind of load will pull down that circuit and that's why it was showing up so far back as the volume control and a discrepancy when in fact what was wrong was not that uh, one channel was weak, is that the other was too strong and the reason why it was strong was because the capacitor to the input which also connects to the feedback loop was shorted and it was pulling the input down and at the same time it was pulling down the feedback loop causing there to be more gain more volume and that's why one channel was louder than the other so kind of weird so I, I suppose you could chalk this up to recapping if you were one of those recapping fiends you could recap everything and find it but otherwise nah so this thing's good thanks for watching guys more stuff to come